welcome everybody to this uh, interview for Utropia TV channel, the TV channel of Utropia, the world's northernmost and best student newspaper. But today we are together with a very, very important guest, Tom from SexXX. So, Thank you. So, Thank you. <laughs> Tom, basically your band is quite... Uh, quite cult, it has a cult status because it's so ancient, so mysterious and I hope today we'll be able to tell us a little bit more about the past and the present of your band. Is that okay? Yeah, we can try and see how much we can uh, reveal all the secrets from the past. <laughs> let's try it. So yeah, let's try it. <laughs> so basically, uh, when was the band formed exactly? The band was formed in 1982. Yeah. Uh, I really don't know when in '82 uh, the first bond. I, I, I wasn't in the band for the first three months, mm. uh, and I came in. So it um, came out of a, a Norwegian punk rock group called Norges Bank. Yeah, it was quite famous in the early '80s too. Yeah, from a punk group called Funk, <laughs> and the bass player, bass player, uh, and the drummer wouldn't be on that funk way they want to play rock and roll mm. so they hooked up with uh, with um, with Bernal and, and uh, two other guitarists mm. and the bass player from Norges Bank went out to play guitar mm. and write songs in 666 and then Bernal and I came along a couple of months later maybe it was like winter time 82 I don't really remember it's uh, it's a long time ago like 30 years yeah and a million beers <laughs> yeah and how long did the band stay together we didn't stay together longer than maybe a year mm. uh, we wanted to go different ways and we were very um, it was it was dark forces mm. uh, driving us in uh, different directions okay but uh, basically, the band Sex 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 it uh, has very dark and occult meaning. What were you influenced both, like uh, conceptually, lyrically, and musically, like in '82? The reason of the band, was, the name of the band was, uh, how do you make a riot after punk rock? The mm -hmm. punk rockers had done it all. Mm -hmm. uh, so, if you wanted to get written, uh, get the story, your name in the newspaper, your name on the radio. You have to make a riot or something. So we went to church and we went to Satan, of course, mm -hmm. and make lyrics about uh, about Satan. And uh, it was only, we didn't know what we were mm -hmm. doing. We were just uh, having a good time, trying to uh, get our name in the paper and try to get some gigs. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we played, uh, in, in the beginning, we played a lot of uh, old Norges Bank tunes. Just we made them our own ways, like more uh, more rock and roll, uh, and they were political and uh, and punk lyrics about uh, yeah, society so like you know Clash and uh, yeah. yeah, and music was influenced by maybe of uh, of Venom and of course Motorhead, mm. and maybe lyrics was more uh, from the Clash side mm. until we we started writing uh, about the man downstairs. Man downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and basically, how many concerts did you do? Do you think? How many concerts? Maybe we did 20, 20, 20 mm. shows. Okay. And we we made a quite big one at um, live at uh, the only TV channel that was in uh, the night of uh, before first first of May, it was used to be, you know, all around Europe, mm. kids were out doing riots and, uh, and stuff like that, so, but um, I think about 20, 20 shows, yeah. Okay, and just, uh, did you ever record something in the studio? Yeah, we tried to. Uh, we, we rented a, a studio one Easter, it must have been Easter 82, or 83, I really don't know, yeah, maybe Easter, and uh, <coughs> we recorded a couple of songs, mm. but I, no one knows where they where they gone, and uh, we don't have any recorded material except what we we played live. Mm. That's a kind of, it's a shame because now we when we had our comeback concert, 
we only had seven songs to play because we couldn't remember any of the the new things we we uh, we made just before we broke up. Mm. So a lot of cool songs I remember. So uh, well, like Lucifer Rising and uh, um, really cool cool song, cool lyrics by by Ulf Krogsat, who was um, the leader of the band then. He's not with us. He don't play today. Mm. So um, no, really, if if anyone if if you hear about anyone who has any tapes, bootlegs, whatever, from the were kids. Please tell me. <laughs> okay, so there's an, another chapter would be to try to find the lost tape. Yeah. Okay. Lot, but uh, we will release a single now, January or February, with two old songs. We're in we're in the studio right now. Hmm. Playing playing in two of the old songs, uh, just re just to make yeah get them out, they always wanted to do cool songs. And uh, we will go back into stu back into the studio and uh, record a couple of the new songs we're writing right now. Mm. Uh, just a question about uh, a couple of years ago, there were a couple of live CDs that have been uh, basically uh, published, a very limited release. What's the status of these CDs? Yeah, they, because our own manager, he always uh, you know, he wanted to keep the myth alive. Mm. So he, he being once in a while throwing out like a live CD. Mm. So they call six 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 live one two and three. Mm. So uh, just for fun, he has like uh, given a little bit to the fans mm. over the years. We should be, uh, we should have been released in USA, on the name of a label called um, uh, the Birth of Norwegian Black Metal, but. Uh, but <laughs> so, something uh, happened, and uh, but I'll have to check with uh, check with the manager uh, what happened there. Mm. So maybe uh, one or two of those bootlegs will will be released in uh, in the U.S. Okay. So, and basically, when you were playing, what was the rock scene in Tromsø? When we were playing, it was of course. Uh, What's now today is called Driv, hmm? was um, Ungdomens Hus is called uh, yeah. for the for the kids. So it wasn't organized in any clubs, and and of course we had a, a rock club, really cool uh, active rock club, and uh, and were festivals of course. Hmm. But it was really hard to get gigs, uh, and in any place else of course, and especially when your name is six 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 and you get uh, the crosses and uh, the pyro and and all that. So um, Norway in the early 80s was very uh, conservative and uh, Christian. Be, uh, we couldn't even uh, they didn't even want to put uh, Life of Brian up in the, the theaters yeah. because of blasphemy and that's kind of stupid. But uh, it, it was good for us, good publicity, of course. Okay. And were there any other like? Uh, metal rock and roll bands both in Tromsø or in all parts of Norway that you were aware of in the time you were Have you heard about Mayhem of course? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we heard about Mayhem and uh <laughs> <laughs> uh but but not uh, we, we didn't hear too much about the band who played kind of same style music and we did and we did. Mm. So uh man. Not in, in a couple of years later, but of course you had mayhem and and you had some subculture bands uh, uh, in Oslo, of course. But mm. we didn't. It's like thirty years ago, and uh, we didn't have mobile phones or internet, or uh, and we had one TV channel and one radio channel. So mm. yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. So basically, you split up like after a year or so, and what? Became of the of the all the members. Did the members start other bands and implication or something like this? Yeah, uh, the lead, the the founder uh, of the band, uh, he never played again. Mm. Uh, I really don't know why. Uh, and the one and the lead guitar player, we we had some kind of tributes band, played a little bit for fun. Uh, I played in a couple of show bands and mm. things like nothing serious. The bass player uh, went on to. Well, went on to London and uh, and tried to uh, to to make it there, but uh, 
he ended up as a really good uh, roadie guitar tech. Mm. <laughs> so no one had, uh, and the drummer, drummer has always been playing all those years, but just for fun, you know. Mm. Uh, so the comeback now was very, uh, but the, the two, the new guys, mm. they are, they are, the new guitarists are playing, have been playing all the time. So played in lots of bands and professionals for years and years and years. So mm. hopefully we get a boost now with them, the, the youngsters, they're only 35 and 38. So <laughs> the kids in the band will hopefully will want to play a lot. Okay. And basically you speed up in sometimes in 83. So what did you uh, thought about uh, explosion of the Norwegian metal, black death and things like this that happened like a decade after, after you? I didn't see that coming at all. Uh, I had no idea that uh, this uh, should be a, such a big thing in Norway and, and worldwide and, and maybe especially middle of Europe and Hitler. Uh, no, uh, I was really, really surprised that uh, it was this kind of music that should go uh, go all the way. Mm. Really, yeah, I had no idea. Couldn't couldn't see that one coming at all, no. But uh, cool, really cool and really good bands and uh, extremely good musicians and uh, skilled uh, the place I'm really, yeah, I'm happy about it. But maybe if we're not a, a black metal band as black metal bands are today, we hopefully we, we inspired someone to play uh, some cool and fast rock and roll music. <laughs> and what's uh, special is that you are now like one of the owner of the place we are here, the Bastard Bar, which is the rock and roll place for Tromsø has been lots of very great band playing here. Thank you, thank and you. <laughs> even tonight we got like a Blood Red Throne coming. Yeah. And a couple of weeks ago it was Vortex and Susperia. So most people actually when they grow older they just focus only on the music they were listening to when they were younger. But you seem to yourself be uh, actually interested in the more modern uh, metal and things like this. Yes, of course, we're interested in music. Mm. Yeah, so the music will fall, develop, and uh, we can't be stuck in the stuck in the eighties as uh, replaceable headsets. Mm. So uh, no, we have, it's it's a cool general music. Uh, so I, I like this black metal, trash metal, uh, and so and it's fun. It's 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 happening in Norway. That's what is interesting about it. So and um, yeah, I just always liked it. Yeah. Also. When I went to your concert, like in the beginning of the month, I was really impressed because she was really, really fast, really energetic, very catchy, no slow bullshit or any stuff. And I could maybe like feel like your music is a great mixture of very archaic heavy metal and uh, hardcore punk music. Yeah, that should be about it. Yeah, mm. influenced of course, but we are all punk rockers and. Uh, a little bit of Motorhead and Venom, uh, should, yeah, hardcore punk rock, that's what we've grown up with, that's, yeah. Mm. And what do you think about the other very dynamic arm of Norwegian music to like the hardcore punk scene? Like you've also been booking quite a lot of good band here, like, uh, what's, it, what's your opinion? Do you think the punk scene in Norway is as good as the metal scene today? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You got this skate punk uh, new generation kids. I think uh, maybe they're not really that skilled, but it uh, they kick ass. Really, <laughs> they really kick ass. You don't have to be the best guitar player in the world to kick ass. Mm. So uh, I'm not the best singer in the world, but we have we put on a hell of a show. Mm. <laughs> so basically, when you why did you decide to reform? Basically, because we were asked by who? Kuturusa. <laughs> uh, Really? Yeah. <laughs> they asked you, was it specially for, uh, it was the co a concert with Norgus Bank and, yeah, uh, yeah. and 666 and I yeah. said, can we, can we get you to play again for like a 80s show? Yeah, yeah, that's what they asked. They, they want to do a, a 80s show with a local band from the 80s and as if you were interested. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. So we check out with uh, with all the members and the two guitar players said no, mm. no, no f way, <laughs> and um, okay. So we have to find some some new ones and uh, 
uh, they said, yeah, hell yeah, it's been an honor to play with 666. So we made a show, and afterwards said, why the hell not? This was really funny. Come on, let's make a uh, couple of new songs and see uh, what happened. We are uh, uh, old fat men going, uh, playing rock and roll. So now we're, new single is coming. We had uh, three gigs since then, and new ones are coming up. So uh, mm. hopefully we have a tour next year. And, uh, and yeah, but we can... Uh, an LP will be will be coming along, a CD or something. Yeah, that's that's great news. But another question specific about Tromsø is yeah. that you were there early '80s, then you split up, and since then there have been virtually no metal band at all in Tromsø until the late '90s. Yes, of course there were some, but I, I really, really don't remember. I was uh, I moved out of town and uh, and. It, it was the the eighties, you know. So I uh, yeah. <laughs> don't remember that much, but for mm. <laughs> seven or eight years there. Mm. So uh, of course there were metal bands, but I, really I can't remember. You know, the eighties came along with a uh, with a generation of Bon Jovi and Europe and all that just came along. Mm. So uh, that happened until the, the early eighties when. Uh, Gladly, uh, uh, you can you can say well, whatever you want, but uh, Nirvana and those kids uh, mm. came along and maybe saved rock and roll music. Mm. So uh, yeah, the metal from the early nineties. Mm. So Tom, uh, thank you. Just gave us lots of very good secrets, <laughs> and I think this lots of people around. Norway, anyone in the world will probably be very interested to know more about 666. <coughs> so, uh, we'd like to thank you very much both for your band, great music, and your involvement in the scene. I'll be going to headbang at the concert tonight for sure. We'll be headbanging tonight, yeah. Yep. So, and hopefully see you on stage one other day, okay? Yeah, thank you, my pleasure. Thank you. Anytime. Bye. Bye.